Hey guys, it's Training Blood back with another video here to give you my review on WWE Elimination Chamber 2018. Show got off the air, well, about uh, nearly an hour ago. I was just kind of talking to some friends on Facebook about it, making some Facebook posts about everything that happened tonight, you know. And um, I was also kind of trying to think of a uh, what I'm going to do with the, the, my review, you know, like how I'm going to sort it out, of course. But here we go, guys. Nomination tw Chamber 2018, in my opinion, was absolutely awesome. Uh, basically because of the two chamber matches, including the first ever women's champion, not women's championship, but women's, well, it was for the women's championship, but first ever women's elimination chamber match as a whole, you know. And, um... Which I'll be talking to uh, very shortly about, about, sorry, not to, um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, awesome show, but a lot of people say it was predictable, um, but I don't care, honestly, I, if the matches are great, you know, I'm happy, D doesn't have to be unpredictable every single time, seriously, really doesn't, but, um, Speaking of predictable, or predictions, I should say, I got every single match on this card correct. Finally. I was so happy that I did. You know, I'll just say this. Uh, back when I reviewed Backlash 2017, I was so pissed off that I got all but one match wrong. Being the main event, of course, I thought I would definitely get that right, but I didn't, and that was bullshit. Cause I that I should have gotten that right, honestly. Just, just you know, we had Jobber Mahal winning the title, which is stupid. Still a stupid, worst WWE champion of all time. But anyway, now I can finally put that to rest. I got every single match on this show correct. And, yeah, like I said, even if it was predictable, you can't take that away from me. I am so happy and proud of myself, man. But, yeah. Alright, so now we are going to, um, what are we going to do? Of course, we're going to review the, the pay-per-view itself. Uh, of course, like I, of course, that's why you're here, watching this. But, um... If you can hear it in the background, we got a uh, elimination chamber. I still got the network on. I haven't turned it off yet, you know, from when I was watching it. So if you can hear anything happen, you know, they're just replaying the pay per view again, which is I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much. But anyway, here to review it finally. I've been rambling on too much, I think. So yep. Yeah. All right. First, we start off with the pre-show, of course. And on the pre-show, we have the club, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Versus the Midst Raj, Kurt Angle, no, not Kurt Angle, Curtis Axel, and Bo Dallas. Uh, this was a fun pre-show match, in my opinion. You know, what you'd see on Raw, but a fun episode, like a fun Raw match. You know, wasn't too long. It was all good. It was sweet. Too sweet, if you want to hear a pun. And uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. And the club got the win. On Raw, there's actually been a bit of a feud between the club and the Revival. And, um, like, they've had, like, three matches on Raw or something like that. Two or three matches. I don't know exactly. But, um, the club, um, I'm sorry, the Revival, I'm sorry. I'm very glad the, Re the Revival didn't get involved. Even if they did get involved, and involved, sorry, maybe they wouldn't have won the match. Maybe they still would have won the match anyway, sorry. But... <clears throat> but yeah, cool match, that's the only pre-show match, and now we are going to uh, kick off with the, the real main show, um, we are going to open up with the Women's Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Um, we have Alexa Bliss defending against Bailey, Mandy Rose, Mickey James, Sonya Deville, and Sasha Banks. This was another awesome match. Kinda, kinda exceeded expectations, if you ask me. 
I loved a lot of the storytelling in this match. It was just awesome storytelling in my opinion. The match started off with uh, Bailey and Sonya Deville, I believe. Yep. And, uh, you know, just good one-on-one -on -one stuff. It was entertaining. And then, uh, the first chamber part opens, and it's Mandy Rose. And Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, of course, are partners. Uh, part of the group, Absolution. Um, so they work together, and they're, they're working together trying to put Bailey away. But they ended up, you know, just having too much fun torturing her. You know, whipping her into the chamber and stuff. So that was awesome. Um, and I uh, really um, loved that, you know, the storytelling with that. And um, they never ended up pinning Bailey. Um, and then uh, Sasha Banks came in. And... Um, And, uh, who came after that? Oh, yeah, Sasha Banks came out. I'll, I'll talk about her first. And, you know, she's friends with Bailey on the, on WWE TV. And, um, they did work together for a bit. You know, Sasha was helping her, you know, get Absolution off of her back. And then, uh, Mandy Rose, uh, gets hit with the, uh, with the, uh, bank statement. Or not hit with, I, I guess. Um, but, um, I'd say she was, uh, um, she, yeah, she, she gets in that and she taps out. And that was, uh, the first, um, elimination, um, first elimination in this match. And, uh, I feel kind of bad for Mandy Rose, man. I mean, she was actually the first person to ever get eliminated from uh, the Women's Royal Rumble match. And now she's the first person to get eliminated in the women first ever women's elimination chamber match. I hope that doesn't end up being a streak for her or anything like that. But um, but uh, I hope not. And but maybe that was like the last like first ever women's gimmick match type thing. Like we done Royal Rumble, we done Money in the Bank, we even did Hell Hell in a Cell and. What else is there, like, for, for there to be a first ever great women's type match? Um, well, maybe three stages of hell? I don't think that really works, to be honest. I don't know if that would bring that back, let alone with the women. But, um, you know, because I feel like maybe that would be too much, you know. I'm trying to sound nice, by the way. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, enough about that. Uh, then I think Mickey James get, gets eliminated. I forgot how she got eliminated, but she did. Uh, oh, I'm on Wikipedia right now, so I'll search that up. Uh, Bailey to Belly. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, uh, sorry. Then, uh, then Sonya Deville, the other member of Absolution, got eliminated after that. Uh, not Mickey James. Oh, by Mickey James, uh, Sonya Deville got eliminated. Luthay's press off the top of a pot, which was nice. Then, um... Mickey James got eliminated after a Bailey to Bailey. Um, then uh, after that, it was just down to to Alexa Bliss, who uh, actually entered the match last, which was awesome. Um, and uh, and uh, what, what was the last? Oh yeah, it was Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Alexa Bliss, and. Uh, and, uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks being, uh, friends on WWE TV, they, um, they worked together trying to get Alexa Bliss, Alexa Bliss kept climbing the chamber, kept trying to find various ways to hide away, and then eventually Bailey and Sasha Banks snapped in each other, you know, every woman for themselves, so that was awesome, um, and then we fight for a bit, and then Bailey, um, gets rolled up by Alexa Bliss, pins one, two, three, Bailey is eliminated. She, she lost amazing in the match, to be fair. Um, so, you know, nothing too ashamed to be of. You know, it's better than her performance. I'm sorry, uh, better than how she did at the, uh, at the Royal Rumble. You know, she, she was only eliminated after, like, two minutes. She was in this match for 25 minutes, you know, around that time. And it was down to Sasha and Alexa. 
Um, they fight for a bit. I think. Uh, I think Sasha attempted to do the. The bank statement or something like that, but uh, ultimately Alexa Bliss gets the victory, top rope DDT, to defeat uh, to win the first ever Wins Elimination Chamber. Awesome, you know. I was so happy when that when that happened. Then after the match, what happened after the match? Um, sorry, just uh, something on Facebook. I'm just going to type something to this person, and yeah, after the match, um, uh, Alexa Bliss teased the face turn, you know, she was like, um, you know, I'm so happy that this happened, you know, um, and, uh, you know, if you follow your dreams, you can accomplish anything or something like that, and then... And then she then then she tricked us. She went back to bit to acting like a heel, and she was going like um um how how was she going like um uh, I don't know why my mind's foggy right now. Probably because I've been up since six a.m. But um then she was then she went back to acting like a heel. Tricked us all, you know. Ah, uh, I was kind of hoping she'd get back to acting like a heel. Get back to being a heel, you know. And she's like, you know, I'm going to WrestleMania as the World Women's Champion, something like that. But, yeah, that was that match. I talked about that match for a long time, I know, but it was awesome. Another awesome first ever women's type match. Great stuff. Uh, then we have the WWE Raw Tag Team Championship match. We got the bar consisting of Cesaro and Sheamus defending against Titus Worldwide, which sounds like a random match, you know, but I was happy for Titus and Apollo, you know, um, and I, people may, might be sleeping on this match, but I actually really enjoyed it, you know, uh, I thought it was fun while they lasted, a lot of nice teasing tags, sometimes when you thought, uh, the match was over, when that Titus, Titus won, or, um, someone else, or, or, or whether the thing was gonna retain, and ultimately, uh, the bar retains. Cesaro and Sheamus remain Royal Tag Team Champions. Awesome stuff. So yeah. And uh, then we go on to the next match. We have Asuka versus Nia Jax. And this match, to me, was a huge disappointment. It really was. And if Nia Jax had won, she would be added to Asuka's championship match at WrestleMania. She still hasn't picked yet, Asuka. Um, but her and Nia, Nia Jax, they could have done so much better, and it was like they're just kind of getting it over with, just so Asuka could get a win. Even though I'm a huge fan of Asuka, I love Asuka, and I was rooting for her to win, and she did. Um, but still, I was just, uh, I just, I'm just not, a, I don't like this match. I really don't like this match. Um, we got uh, Nia Jax, you know, acting dominant over Asuka, then Asuka rolls her up, pins. But after the match, and this was probably better than the match itself, which was sad. I'm not trying to tear this match apart, you know. Okay, I am, maybe, a little bit. But, um, Nijax kind of things her through the, through the, um, announce, not the announce table, the barricade. Which was really, which was kind of cool, you know. Uh, people were mad to ask one. But, did you really ex expect anything else? Like, did you, do you think she would have won or something? I don't know, but, yeah. Next match. We have Woken Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. Um, second time this match uh, is happening, and because um, the first time it happened, it was on Raw 25, which, by the way, was a huge disappointment. Uh, but this match, um, oh, before the match actually started, by the way, uh, Matt Hardy um, did his entrance, and then Bray's music, Titan Tron, showed up. And then the lights went out, and it was only Bray Wyatt in the ring. And I was like, what the, is this match not going to happen anymore or something? Um, but uh, Matt Hardy ends up coming out after Bray checks everywhere, and everywhere, and Matt Hardy was like kind of taunting, taunting uh, Bray Wyatt through like speakers and stuff. And then uh, they fight before the match actually starts, and then they get in the ring, and it's fun. You know, really fun match. Uh, not, not like a great match though, but fun theatrics fun stuff before the match, and Bray Wyatt actually won on Raw 25, 
But uh, Matt Hardy, Woken Matt Hardy, defeated, or in this case, deleted Bray Wyatt. Um, and it was a fun match. I enjoyed it. Um, and yeah. Um, so that was good stuff. So yeah, um, and then after this, I told you guys, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did, I haven't watched it back, but I'm pretty sure I told you guys in my Royal Rumble review that Ronda Rousey showed up after the Women's Royal Rumble match. That was absolutely awesome. Uh, and here she officially made her, um, uh, contract signing, so... She's officially on Raw, guys. Whether she shows up on Raw tomorrow or not, you know, we'll find out tomorrow, of course. Or I'll find out tomorrow, because I'm not going to review Raw. I'm, I'll probably watch it, you know. But, um, I haven't always been keeping up with Raw and SmackDown recently. But, um, uh, alright, starts off. Kurt Angle comes out, which was awesome. Then Triple H and Stephanie McMahon come out, which was unannounced, by the way. I had a feeling it would happen, you know, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon coming out. But they did. That was awesome. The crowd was super hyped about that, which was awesome. Then, um, what, what happened? And then, um, Kurt Angle kind of stirs the pot with uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, and even Ronda Rousey. Um, uh, Kurt Angle was like... You know, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon are out here, you know, just to manipulate you or something like that. And, uh, and then Kurt was, and Triple H was like, well, like, what the F are you, what the freak are you doing, Kurt? And then Kurt Angle was like, you said it yourself, uh, Paul, I don't know if he said his name, his real name, <laughs> but, um, you said it yourself, um, it's about time we signed this B.I. bitch. Well, he, it sounded like he was saying bitch, but Triple H was like, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. And then you could see uh, uh, Ronda Rousey was getting pissed off. And, uh, and, uh, then I think they, they forced security or something to get Kurt Angle backstage. And, um, Kurt Angle said, hey, one last thing, and, uh, I, I forgot what, what he said, but he said something, and it was really cool and kind of savage, you know. Um, but then he said that thing, whatever it was. I, I can't remember. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm real. I really wish I remembered for this review, but um, but uh, but um, then Kurt is taken backstage, of course. Then um, Woken. I'm sorry. I, I was looking at. I was thinking about the match before. Um, then Ronda Rousey, um, is pissed off, you can tell, and then Ronda, uh, does like an arm drag to Triple H on the table that was in the ring, you know, because it is a contract signing, and then Stephanie gets pissed off, like nothing at Ronda, and, uh, and, uh, Stephanie goes to Ronda Rousey, who do you think you are, and she smacks the freaking crap out of Ronda Rousey, that was intense, and the crowd started, and it looked so freaking hard, like, dang, man, like, yeah, um, it just looked, it looked, it was so, that, this whole segment was intense, and awesome, I, I don't care what everyone says, you know, if people are crapping on Ronda Rousey, you know, too bad, if you don't like her in WWE, suck it, alright, but, um, but, yeah, Stephanie slaps the crap out of Ronda Rousey, and Ronda looks pissed off like a mother man. And then, um, what happens after that? Um, uh, and then, uh, the crowd was chanting, you effed up, you effed up. Well, they didn't say effed, of course, they said the actual word that I'm implying, you know, but, and then Stephanie slowly gets out of the ring. She looks like she did F up, but, um, you know, and, uh, yeah, and then Ronda Rousey, I thought she was going to text Tiffany, maybe, but nope. Ronda Rousey grabs the contract, signs it. She is officially on Raw. This is, without a doubt, setting up Kurt, uh, Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania, which I hope is good. I can't wait for that. Um, 
it's going to be a fun spectacle of a match, I bet. And there probably will be Ronda Rousey's uh, debut match in WWE, which I hope it is. I really want to save anything we see, you know, involving Ronda Rousey wrestling for WrestleMania, you know. I, I, I hope she shows up on Raw tomorrow. That would be awesome. But, but I hope she doesn't wrestle yet. Of course, I want that to happen at WrestleMania, like I said. But that was an awesome segment. I don't care what anyone says. I really liked it. I I enjoyed it myself, you know. And that was that was awesome. That was awesome. Okay. Then um, yep, she signs the contract. Then it is time for the main event, guys. Seven man, yes, guys. Seven men elimination chamber match, where the winner will challenge Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal Championship. At WrestleMania 34, we have Braun Strowman versus Elias versus John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus The Miz versus Finn Balor versus Seth Frickin' Rollins. And before the match started, Elias did a promo in the ring. It lasted quite a while, and I actually like that it lasted quite a while. You know, he, stuck, he, looked, he acted like he was acting nice to the crowd in Las Vegas. But then he was like... But then, of course, he turned on them. Like he usually does, which was awesome. You know, just absolutely awesome. Um, uh, and uh, the crowd cheered at first. They were actually pretty behind Elias uh, before the match started. Until they, he started talking crap about them. <laughs> And then Braun Strowman's music hits, uh, and he gets the ring, and Elias quickly gets in his uh, pod, you know. And then, uh, then I think uh, maybe it's the Mizu. Anyway, you know what? It doesn't really matter who, the order of the entrances go. Then the rest of the guys come in: John Cena, Roman Reigns, the Miz, Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins, and. Uh, Actually, I remember now. That was actually the order that they all came in. Um, well, um, so yeah. And, uh, you know, with the, with it being seven men, first ever seven men elimination chamber match, you had, um, it started off with The Miz, Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins, you know, triple threat. I don't know why people are like, oh, where are they going to add a fifth pod? Just start with three, you dumbass. But seriously, um... Then it was awesome that it started off with three. You had the Miz looking at Seth, you know, how about you team up with me and, you know, we'll we'll team up together to beat up Finn Balor. And he's like, nah. And then uh, Finn Balor, sorry, the Miz uh, did the too, too sweet thing to Finn Balor, you know, hoping to make an alliance with him against Seth Rollins. And he was like, nah, 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 man. And then, um... The Miz ends up charging at both of them at the same time, which causes Finn Balor and Seth Rollins to uh, countering that and end up being up Miz. And they actually throw the Miz um, to the chamber uh, part a bit, which was cool. Uh, and I was kind of scared that Miz would kind of be getting a Heath Ledger, not Heath Ledger, Heath Slater at the 2018 Royal Rumble treatment, how... Everyone who comes in just attacks him, you know. But that didn't happen, thankfully. He did get that, you know, at the start for, like, 30 seconds. But, um, maybe a bit longer than that, or shorter than that. I'm not sure exactly. But, um, that was really cool. You know, and then Finn and Seth fought for a bit. Then, uh, you know, it became a triple threat match for, you know, about five minutes, of course, from when it was the bell rung. Then after that, it was, um... What happened after that? Um, I think, yeah, yeah, it was John Cena who came out next. That was awesome. Um, and I forgot what happened exactly. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, we got the uh, stare down between John Cena and Seth Rollins. Um, that was amazing, man. Like, because if you guys don't know, John Cena is my favorite wrestler of all time, and Seth Rollins is my favorite current wrestler. Current full-time wrestler. Saying the full-time part so that makes sense. 
you know. And John Cena and, and him were staring down. It, it was awesome, man. I, I didn't expect them to do that, but I'm glad they did. And um, do you know what I would love? I've been thinking about this for quite a few months now, actually. I would love it if the main event of WrestleMania 35, not 34 this year, but 35 next year in 2019, was John Cena versus Seth Rollins for either either one of the WWE or Universal Championships, honestly. In Seth Rollins... Sorry, John Cena's final match. I would have it... I would have had maybe Seth when the you know you know what this match is about my, isn't about my fantasy booking, you know I'll I'll say that I want I want John Cena Seth Rollins for a world title in, in the main event of next year's WrestleMania, which I would love, but I'll just say that. But anyway, back to reviewing the match, you know, um, like I said, not my fantasy booking video, but then then Roman Reigns comes out. And we're like, oh boy. And then um, they all fight for a bit, I guess. And Braun Strowman gets out after that. You know. And, uh. And Braun, man. His performance in this match, I think, was the, the reason that this match ended up being awesome. You know. Started off. When, when Braun came in the match, um, he did a body power slam, eliminated The Miz. So Miz was the first guy out, fortunately. I'm glad he lost, lasted a bit long, you know. I'm glad he didn't get eliminated, like, immediately or anything. And then, everyone that's currently in the ring, Elias is not in the ring yet. But they all do finishes on him. Um, John Cena does the attitude adjustment to him. Pins him, Braun kicks out. Roman spears him, pins him, Braun kicks out. Seth Rollins curb stomps him, Braun kicks out. Finn Balor coup de gras him onto the steel um, outside of the ring. Don't, not sure what, what exactly it's called, but he didn't have time to get him back into the ring to pin him. But that whole sequence, man, was... It had my heart racing so much. I was like, holy shit, holy, holy crap, man. Oh my god. And then, um... And then what happened after that? Um, then, uh, Elias ends up coming in. Braun Strowman power slams him. One, two, three. Um... And yeah, so, so much for Elias, you know, being in that match for uh, as long as, for, you know, f for being the last one to enter. Um, and then uh, John Cena gets eliminated by Braun Strowman after one power slam. I don't know why they were acting like it was impossible to kick out of the power slam, seriously. I wish, here's what I would have done. I would have had John Cena get the power slam, then kick out. Then have Braun do the power slam again. Then that's when Cena gets pinned, you know. And then, uh, yep. Yeah, then Cena's eliminated. Then back to reviewing the match. Then uh, a few minutes later, Finn Balor gets power power slammed, eliminated. Then after quite a quite a long time. You know, we then it was then it was Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns teaming up for a bit. Um, they fought Braun Strowman for a bit, and then they ended up fighting each other, which uh, which was like, what are you doing? The, even the commentator said that. What are you doing? You know. Um, and you know, kind of right to say that, honestly. Um, What happened? Um, yep, yeah, then uh, K 
Cur- uh, Seth Rollins attempts to curb stomp onto Roman Reigns. But Roman Reigns counters. Then Braun Strowman gets back in the ring. Power slams. Oh, Roman Reigns actually got tossed out to the outside of the ring, by the way. And then Braun Strowman power slams Seth Rollins. Pins him. One, two, three. Rollins is eliminated. Braun Strowman has eliminated every single competitor in this match by himself. He kicked out of so much, man. By the way, I don't know if I, um, oh, I should have mentioned this. Um, uh, but before Seth got eliminated, he actually climbed to the top of a chamber pod, did a frog splash from all the way up there, and Braun still kicked out, of course. And that's when Seth Got power slammed himself and uh, got eliminated, unfortunately. Um, then uh, it was down to Seth, not, not Seth Rollins, but Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Um, and uh, how exactly did it go? Um, Alright, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman stared down for a bit. Roman, you could tell he was like, oh shit, this all, it's all on me now, like, it's just me against Braun, who eliminated every other competitor, that was crazy, man, and then they fight for a bit, uh, they, then, uh, Roman Reigns, um, throws Braun onto the grate, yes, the steel grate, that's what it's called, I think, and, uh, he whips him into the chamber, I think, and then Roman gets back in the ring, I thought he was gonna spear him through the ropes, but that didn't happen, but uh, he actually jumps up, does that thing where he jumps over the top rope onto the outside, um, which he hasn't done in ages. I noticed that. So that was awesome seeing him do it again here. Then Roman Reigns, Superman punched Braun Strowman a million times. Not literally a million times, obviously. But uh, he did it quite a few times, at, at least twice, you know. And then he speared him twice, goes for the pin. One, two, three. Braun Strowman is eliminated and at WrestleMania 34, probably in the main event, it will be Brock Lesnar defending the Universal Championship against Roman Reigns. And I can't wait for that match. I know a lot of people are crapping on it, saying like, oh my god, Roman's in the main event again. Get over it, alright? And seriously, we'll... Uh, what is there to complain about, really, about this match? Their WrestleMania 31 match was absolutely amazing. Seriously. So, um... Oh, it says on Wikipedia, three Superman punches. Then two spears. Um... <laughs> yeah, I was on the page right now to see the eliminations order. And, yeah. And, uh... Yep, it will be Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 34. The WrestleMania 31 match was absolutely amazing, so I, I, I expect nothing less than an amazing match at WrestleMania between those two. I can't wait, man. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so yep, that's the pay-per-view, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed my review, guys. Uh, um... If you watch the show, I hope you enjoyed it um, as much as I did because I really enjoyed it. You know, I was so proud of myself that I got every single match correct. Pre-show match, champion match, raw tag match, working match versus Bray, Oscar versus Dijax. Pre-show match. I said pre-show match. But I'm very proud of myself that I got every single match correct on here. And uh, Fastlane, that's on uh, March 12th, March 11th. uh, and the US and I can't and I, I look I look I don't think it'll be as good as the Lynch Chamber but I hope it's good still uh, I, I can't wait for Wrestlemania honestly it's gonna be of course it's Wrestlemania how can you not look forward to Wrestlemania seriously um and yeah um so yeah um I can't wait uh Awesome chamber matches, uh, cool undercard, and an awesome segment between Ronda Rousey, Triple H, Steph McMahon, and Kurt Angle. You know, uh, Raw tomorrow should be good. Can't wait. 
And uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll see you guys for the beginning of my Bully playthrough series on March 4th. And then after that, I'll, I'll do some more parts, of course. And then I'll do my review of Fastlane. And we'll see what happens from that point on, you know. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my review. Uh, and uh, hope you enjoyed. And peace out, guys.